Hey guys, JJ here to tell you that Infinity Ward has outlined the first of four planned DLC packs for Call of Duty Ghosts. The first DLC pack will be called Onslaught and will launch on January 28th for Xbox One and Xbox 360, with releases to follow on other platforms after a period of exclusivity. Onslaught will consist of four new multiplayer maps, a new Maverick Assault and Sniper Rifle, and will contain the first of four planned narrative episodes for Extinction, the game's four-player cooperative mode versus Aliens. The first Extinction episode will introduce two new characters who will drive the narrative, two new alien species, and a new weapon as you infiltrate a remote Alaskan research facility that's been looking into the origins of the alien threat. For those who prefer the more traditional versus multiplayer, the new maps include Bayview, a classic Californian boardwalk complete with boutique gift shops and an offshore naval destroyer because, you know, where else do you keep a destroyer? Containment, a war-torn Mexican village, fog, and homage to classic horror films where a player who manages to complete a specific field order becomes Michael Myers, and Ignition, an old Florida-based launch facility inspired by Scrapyard, a fan-favorite map for Modern Warfare 2. The DLC will be available standalone or as part of the Season Pass, which grants access to those, as well as three other planned DLC packs, an exclusive free-fall multiplayer map, and unique character item. Also launching on Jan 28th is the new point-and-click adventure from Double Fine's Tim Schafer, who's best known for his work on Grim Fandango, Psychonauts, The Secret of Monkey Island, and Brutal Legend. The game was announced on Kickstarter in February last year as Double Fine Adventure before it received its final name and reached its initial funding goal of 400000 in the first eight hours, before more than doubling the target with $1 million in funding in the first 24 hours, breaking records for Kickstarter. One month later, the Kickstarter closed with $3.3 million in funding, more than eight times the initial goal. Broken Age will be Schaefer's first return to adventure game since the 1998 release of Grim Fandango, departing from the style of his most recent titles, Stacking, Costume Quest, and The Cave. Of the game, Schaefer says, It's been 16 years since I've made an adventure game, almost 20 since I made a point and click, and just shy of two years since I dared the internet to force me to make one. Broken Age is being split into two acts or episodes. The first releases this month, and the second will come later this year and a free update for those who bought the first act. It will be available via Steam for Windows, Mac, and Linux initially, and will launch later for iOS and Android as well. Kickstarter backers will have two weeks of early access beginning today ahead of the official launch. Those using Steam can also get an early look at a new feature of that gaming client as well. That is, if you have an Oculus Rift dev kit. I mean, who doesn't have one of those laying around? Valve has quietly launched a Steam VR beta, adding support for a virtual reality interface as of the newest Steam client beta version. In case the fact that it's beta supporting for a beta client didn't tip you off, the functionality is still a bit finicky. Several users have reported it working intermittently, and Valve has already released several updates since launching it last night. Now, if you don't mind any of that and still want to give it a go, check the tools section and make sure you have Steam VR downloaded. Opt into the beta update option in the tools section. Once the update downloads, exit Steam and run the executable with a dash VR at the end of the command line. If you usually use a shortcut, you can add the dash VR to the end of the target destination in the shortcut properties. Speaking of unstable but awesome Steam stuff, man, we're on fire with these awesome transitions. DayZ Standalone, which is available now on Steam via their Early Access program, only launched last month as an alpha build, but already the game has passed 1 million copies sold, despite having no firm release date for a finished version of the game. Early this month, when the game passed 800,000 sales, creator Dean Hall commented on the game's success, saying, Honestly, 250,000 within a quarter was what I would have considered success, so to move nearly 800,000 in under a month is crazy. Despite the hordes of gamers falling over themselves to hand in their dollars, he continues to caution them about what they can expect with the alpha version of the game, and advises that most gamers may prefer to wait until they get a more polished gaming experience. There are many problems which can ruin your gameplay experience. These are being actively fixed. But if you delayed your purchase by a month, you would pay the same price, but it would be a better experience, he says. And that's the big news for today. Do you enjoy getting early access to unfinished versions of games, or do you prefer to wait and play them once they're finished? Shout out and let us know in the comments. And also, check out RoosterTeeth.com later this week for a new episode of The Patch, where we argue for our favorite games of 2013.